to the Trinity Force Podcast. Yo, it's that Triforce cast beaming straight to your home. Grab a beer so we know Pony ain't drinking alone. Send an email, a quick tweet, just pick up the phone. Leave a message, hit the beep if you're a creep, watch your tone. Discuss the meta game, patch notes, whatever helps your stats most. Obi Pone Kenobi is your last hope to snatch gold. So grab your headphones and join in the fun. We'll try and force in some jokes and some cringeworthy puns. Yo, we can make it together, people. Trinity Force Podcast. These boys are second to none, but that's the end of the intro, it's time we've begun. Hey guys, welcome to Trinity Force Podcast. My name is Adam Ponophobia Cogswell, and I am your host for this lovely evening. It is April the 8th, or May the 18th. I'm a month behind. I'm pulling a punch. Who's living in the past now? <laughs> Join me. <laughs> It is uh, it is May the 18th of 2016. You are listening to episode number 361. Tonight we talk about Tal- Talia, Tal- 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 Talia. I don't know how to say your goddamn name. Talia. Talia. Thank you. I, I keep on to call her like Talila for some reason. I know there's not yes. the Talia. Yeah, we're going to be poor, poor, poor Talila. Yep. Do you yeah. know who Chris Talia, the comedian, is? Just say Talia instead. Of Talia. I'm gonna. I need. I need. To, I need it right in front of me. I need. I need to put a monitor above this that says Talia, so I know how to say it. Talia. I'm gonna. I'm gonna screw it up again. Talia. Yes, we all will. All right. A few quick announcements before we jump in there. First and foremost, Punch is with us this week. Yes. Hello, Hello Punch. Talonasty is here. Back in the flesh. Our special guest for every champion episode we do. Skyen is with us. It's 2 a.m. and I'm not wearing any pants. How you doing? Hey, it's 8 p.m. and I'm not wearing pants. <laughs> Sounds like a party. <laughs> it's quickly become that kind of episode. Yeah. Hey, and Chira Jaden is here. Hey, what's going on? Welcome, welcome. So as I said previously, every single time a new champion comes out or is reworked, Skyen is going to attempt to join us. As we know, it is 2 a.m. over uh, across the sea. Yeah, it's uh, thanks for that, Adam, you dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> we could reschedule it to make it easier for you at like 10 a.m. on a Saturday. But you won't. <laughs> But we won't. <laughs> so we're going to talk about uh, Talia tonight. We're going to talk about her design. We're going to talk about her play style, her abilities, uh, her artwork, everything about this champion as we have done with the, I think we did it with three previous champions, maybe two. Yeah, including Started the Tarek rework. Right? Didn't we do Aurelian it one soul before Tarek? And then Tarek. Aurelian Soul was yes. the other one. That's right. Better call Soul. He was uh, the first one. Two quick things to throw out. One scavenger hunt is going on. The question that you have to answer if you're on the Trinity Force, pro- if you're listening to the Trinity Force proper, is who was introduced last every single episode without fail. You heard it on this episode. Go listen to the five other podcasts within the network and answer their questions. Send it in the contest at trinityforcepodcast.com. If you don't play one of the games, like if you listen to League of Legends but don't play Hearthstone, just make something wild and stupid up. Okay, I'm going to give you a spoiler for the Hearthstone one. They're asking you to uh, do something with a card. And so, like, if you don't play, just go look up Hearthstone cards, look what they are, and then just kind of, like, pick the stats and just make something really stupid up. Like, make, like, a 1-1 one, one that kills everything on the board. I don't know. Just, like, do, you know, have fun with it, right? <laughs> the card that says Adam's told me so, and it's 1-1, one, one, yeah. kill everything on the board. <laughs> it's called Adam's Tilt Rage. I was going to say yeah. tilt your opponent or something, right? Tilt a whirl. <laughs> get, get tilted. The subtext is Chogoth was Renekton. <laughs> <laughs> we're next to win subtext um that is the the second announcement for this week is if you have not checked out our patreon a lot of you are probably going to zone out right now but if you play hearthstone you're going to want to go check out patreon.com forward slash t-force network because we have added three new tiers to the patreon and to to uh help with some misconceptions we are not changing the price of champion select that will always be ten dollars we're not going to raise it or and i mean i'm not gonna say we're not going to lower it but likely we won't lower it <laughs> so ten dollars a month gets you champion select however if you don't want the champion select podcast but you still want to give us ten dollars a month you can get two coaching sessions for hearthstone for ten dollars a month you just record them via place tv record them via um obs uh, there's other programs out there that can take care of it you send that in to us they'll send you back um you know their replay analysis of what you should be thinking about and as you understand with hearthstone it's actually really involved because there's a lot of like thinking about what the enemy is played and what he's using and how he's playing it and stuff you may not be thinking about we've got three i think they actually added a fourth now legend ranked player that's gonna be helping out with this these guys are multi-time legend multi-season legend players between alex vom and andrew and they are there to help you out with this game so ten dollars a month gets you just the hearthstone stuff you will not get champion selects if you want the champion selects $20 a month gets you champion selects and the $10 f- 
for Hearthstone, so you get the replays and champion selects. Twenty-five dollars gets you five replay analysis, and for fifty dollars, you get a one-on-one -on -one session with those guys. They'll sit there with an hour with you on Skype. They'll watch you play, and they'll give you live feedback on how to play the game better, so you can ask questions while they're do while they're doing it. And uh, I've actually had those one-on-one -on -one sessions with those guys. Uh, I had never played. Hearthstone, I made it to rank 10 within my first month because I sat down and had two one-on-one -on -one sessions with those guys for an hour each. And that was one They point out stuff you would never think about. Oh, yeah. Like, okay, this is the play I'm going to make. How, how often you're an idiot, do they then... play out how bad you are when you have lethal and you don't realize it? Oh, they will. They'll be like, by the way, you had, you, you had lethal. You're one damage off. You could have had lethal there or something. If you yeah. if you read the Hearthstone subreddit, they're always, they always make fun of people who post clips. They're like, you had lethal like four turns ago. <laughs> And that's the type of shit you have to uh, pay attention to. So, yeah, go check that out. That's patreon.com forward slash T-Force Network. Uh, I guess while we had this guy in, anything new going on over in your Patreon right now? Uh, not really. I'm At university, we're doing exams right now, so I'm very focused on not flunking out, okay. mostly. <laughs> uh, but as soon as I'm on summer holiday, that's pretty much – that. in Denmark, summer holiday is like your spring break. Hmm. Whole lot of time you have off to do whatever shit you want. So that's when I'm going to – button down and focus on doing lots of requests for Patreon uh, supporters and streams where they can come on and say, hey, draw a giant dong on someone's forehead for me or something. Uh, My and I'll, I'll do it. <laughs> I know. We love Dick Hedges. A little portrait podcast. of Adam just on someone's forehead. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess since you're hosting this podcast now, as you're making fun of all the other guests, is uh, <laughs> we need to talk about uh, Talia, as she is a new... Uh, New champion introduced in League of Legends, and she's available right now. She is Talia the Stone Weaver, and I think Punch so eloquently put this at one point that uh, he is not interested in this champion because he missed the airbending <laughs> phase of his high school career. Or whenever that came out, yeah. <laughs> uh, the, thematically, a lot of people were excited about it, um, and a lot of people tied it to, what is that, Air Avatar or The Avatar, Last Airbender or Last something like that. Year. Yeah. So I guess that's, the, that's kind of the vibe that she gives off. Except instead it's of airbending, it's stone bending. hundred percent. Yeah, she definitely vibe. does. There's actually a because I'm a huge Avatar nerd. I can I can take it from here and say that the Avatar Earthbenders are based on on very, I think I'm not sure what the fighting style is called, Qigong or something. A Chinese fighting style which is very sort of solid and raw. You punch the ground, you stomp in things, you solid planting on the ground. But Talia, her animation is actually much more like an airbender. In that show, she's much more fluid. She moves around very so. They've tried to make her just they like they know that they've got they're gonna get comparisons. <laughs> so they've tried to make her much more like an airbender or a waterbender in that she sort of flows rock around the map. Especially her ultimate kind of looks like a wave as it goes across. Yeah, which I find which I find quite interesting because again, huge avatar nerd to see how they've gone. Okay, we've got an earthbender. We've got to do something to avoid a lawsuit. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think they did a good job of making her uh, seem really fluid, but at the same time, like the actual rock abilities do seem solid, and like it's it's hard to explain. The rocks yeah, are yeah. rocks, right? They're yeah, solid I, I and they're heavy and they it. hurt. But yeah. she is really fluid and she moves around gracefully and all that good stuff. Instead of an earth yeah. bender, she's a stone weaver. <laughs> but it does yeah. seem like she's kind of weaving the stones more majestically. You have a good point there. But I, some well, of the I, abilities themselves, they seem like cut and paste from like the TV show from Earthbending, from like knocking people straight up in the air and the way the rock pops out and knocks you backward. I have to imagine that when you're talking about rocks and formations and quickly creating jagged objects, that it's kind of hard to get away from any tropes. That it, I mean, it's not even like a like a cartoon trope, but still, it's a. Uh, but yeah, you mean elemental magic and elemental Properties powers? Are are like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's Final Fantasy has that shit. So you can't you yeah. can't get away from it. Right. So there's always going to be some thematic overlap. She is kind of different in her design from a lot of previous champions because she is very understated in a lot of ways. For instance, if you look at her color profile, she's got this dark red, and then she's got some gray rocks, a gray overcoat, brown hair sort of muted skin. Everything about her is sort of very toned down and muted, especially compared to someone like Aurelian Saul, mm. compared to someone like Tarek. She's very sort of pared down and not very flashy in her design at all, which I, which I found was an interesting choice because Riot, you know, the tendency is when you create new champions in a game or you create new anything, so you want to go bigger, better, flashier, cooler, like you more make sparkles pop. on everything. So <laughs> the way that they've really just gone completely, like, 
toned down. Again, because she's an Earth character. She's earthy. She's ground-based. Like, you don't want to make her too flashy. So that's a, that's a nice design coherence that I, would, I found. I would argue that they made the Flash more on her abilities mm. than they did on her actual character design itself. Yeah. yeah. I think... T- so if you kind of look at her in the in the game, obviously she's just it's red and not gold, but like red and uh, brown br- hues of brown and whatnot, right? Because on her just base character model, I do like the fact that like if you look at her splash art, for example, they put a little bit of flair and character in her kit with the purple shirt to kind of to I, I would assume to offset all the muddy the muddy earth tones and whatnot and the reds and you know all those the, the colors that yeah she our know, first champion with freckles. Yeah, I think she is actually, and she's also the first champion with eyebrows that big. Right. Yes, copper. Which, That's a good color. I'm sorry, I forget that. That, yeah. that, that was not the color I was looking for. <laughs> and actually, speaking of the splash art, if you notice, what's the thing that stands out most in the splash art? Like when you first look at it, what's the thing that that pops into your like, into your view first? It's her boot. Yes. Of all things, it's her boot because it's high lit and it's up in the front on the front of the rock, coming towards the viewer, and that's again that's. Honestly, I'm not a huge fan of the splash for some other reasons, but that's something I think is very clever, that the first thing you see of her, she's a traveler, she's a nomad, the first thing you see is her boot on a rock going places. And then the if you look at the line of shadow in her splash art, on the boot, the shadow between the highlight and the, and the shade leads you as a line up to the middle of her body and then onto her face. So it's got this very nice... Compositionally, it's such a nice flow. I'm, 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 I appreciate that a lot. The thing I don't like about it is I don't think it really conveys the sense of speed that I'd like to see when she's earth surfing and clearly in action. I think she's a little static compared she to She almost like looks Adelina like Spash. magnetized to a rock on the side yeah. of the wall. Uh, like I was going to ask you because I think we, you, you, I know you haven't had. The, have you had the conversation on this podcast? It doesn't matter. Uh, I, I know you've talked previously about uh, the way characters have been contorted in their mm. artwork and whatnot, and I was going to ask you what you thought about her pose in the initial splash. Yeah, if anything, I think it's too understated. Um, the thing about contortion is that when you have an action pose, when you need a character to really convey speed and like they're really uh, going for it, that's when you break the body. That's when you go, okay, the spine can't actually bend this way, but we're going to bend it just a little bit too far to emphasize the action. You can see that in the Warring Kingdom's Riven skin. Her spine, like spines don't do that, but she's about to swing a huge ass sword, so it emphasizes the action. And then on the other hand, you have poses where it's like, th- we want this character to show her tits and her ass, so we're just going to ignore that she has a spine and get them both in the frame. <laughs> That's when it gets really stupid, and c- artists like me get kind of pissy because it's like, no, dude, it's just like if you want to show her tits, just like make, a, make up your mind. Choose one. You can't have both. We can't be a tits but with and Talia, she's like, she's very solid and planted, which I think was what the artist was going for, but she's not... I don't see enough motion to really justify all the blurring and all the like shards and action that go in, goes on in the background. She looks like she's standing still could to that, me. Could anyway. that just be a case of that there's not, not enough particles or whatnot flying by her? There's not enough. There, there's no like yes. wind effects or whatever. Maybe because to me, it, there looks like there could be a lot of action going on. There should be, but just because mm. everything is so crisp and so clear around her model and around her arms and her boots, there's nothing flying by like you would expect. You're you, you are surfing on a rock through the desert of sand and rock there should be particles and you know all yeah. this kind of stuff muddying up what you're seeing also the well, foreshortening I mean, is, is a little if you look at Katarina splash which is still one of my favorite new splash arts in league you, if you look at her her the leg furthest from the viewer is so distorted because they really want that sense of zoom in speed going towards the viewer and and they get that really right with Talia she's much more she's not really pushed back into the picture and there's not really that much depth of field because there's – and again, you're actually right that if there had been more particles going in front of things, you'd get more depth in, in the image, I think. So, yeah, that's, that's part of the reason why. Yeah, she's facing you, but it doesn't feel as if she's coming towards you. No, not really, I don't think. But through all the nitpicking of it, it still is a good <laughs> splash art. We still It is, yeah. and it looks fantastic in the motion graphic they have for it for her lock-in screen. That, that looks really, really cool. Honestly, that almost offsets everything that you see in the static image. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do, they I, have, I do they so have too. the background moving and kind of her... Oh, yeah. It's, the, the it's really like it's zooming bad. past. It's really cool. Okay, now, can somebody answer a question for me, though, with the skin, her skin splash? Is she saving the baby deer? 
Or is she kidnapping? She kidnapping. <laughs> <laughs> I can't Either tell. Or. I think I think the idea is that she's saving them from an avalanche. I'm not sure. I'm not sure actually if she's creating an avalanche and murdering the deer's entire yes, family in yes, front yeah, of that them. could be it. It's like, Maybe that this is mine now to the abyss with you. <laughs> <laughs> I I think I missed that the, uh, the that splash art actually. Yeah, it's the frill yard. I can kick a link at. Oh, I found it. There we go. Okay, cool. She could uh, be a villain. That's all I'm saying. I can see why yeah. because there's there's other deer that <laughs> are the other reindeer. Back at them like <laughs> yeah, with the like smirk on her face. Like, My yeah. son, no. <laughs> <laughs> She's saving them from an avalanche. Can't you see the avalanche in the background yeah, coming over the wall? Who created that avalanche? She might have made that avalanche. She I did. Mean, <laughs> all right, I need to just bring up one other question or one other. What other point for Skyen to go off on? Because I saw this when they originally reached the champion. He knows where I'm going with this. Is that her nose? If, uh, he, if he remembers. Yes, the nose. A lot of people apparently got upset about the nose and tweeted at, at Daniel C. Klein, the Xenon, who designed the character's kit, but had nothing to do with her art, that, Can you point me to even one human who has a nose like this? Upon which people just started bombarding them with pictures of people from the Middle East and from Eastern Europe and India and Pakistan, Northern Africa, parts of Spain, <laughs> also Italy, and, you know, parts of France, you'd see noses like that. It, they're actually fairly common, but there is a point to uh, the nose and the eyebrows uh, as features of her face. Also, the freckles were chosen very deliberately, I think, to set her apart from a lot of the other female champions in League, because the female champions in League in general tend to have straight or sort of inward like, inward curved noses, like very supermodel faces. I could go off on an entire rant about that, but I won't bore us with it this time. But <laughs> that, the fact that she has that very distinctive nose, those big eyebrows, emphasizes again that like, no, no, she's not an adult. She's not, mm -hmm. she's not someone who, who particularly gives a shit about attracting people yet. She's 16, she's, maybe she's, she'll get there. But right now she's not picking her eyebrows. She's not particularly bothered about looking like a beauty ideal. She cares about Shirima, saving it, finding out about her powers. And again, she's a nomad, which is also why they probably chose a somewhat what people would call a more ethnic nose. Because again, that emphasizes, no, no she's not like Miss White Girl from California. She is someone <laughs> from the land of the desert. And you can, you can talk race politics on that. I don't want to, no one wants to, <laughs> no. let's not. I, that was the other point that I wanted to bring up, and the reason I had you talk about that is because we have previously talked about Riot removing the sex appeal or starting to move away from a lot of the sex appeal champions, and by adding just freckles just to a girl's face so or any freckles, person's Adam. face, that they, it generally uh, it, it denotes young or like a younger person, yeah. like a more uh, innocent, not necessarily naive type of uh, you know characteristic. Yeah, and Talia is pretty sexless. Like, if you look at her, just not just because she's 16 and ew, um, but also just, like, it, she could be a slightly girly-looking boy. Like, there's really... She yeah. doesn't have much in the way of hips. There's really there's no bust to speak of. There, she doesn't have long eyelashes or makeup on, particularly. So she is very sort of genderless. So I think they tried very consciously to no, no. This is not a champion who's at all about anything to do with with sexiness or sex appeal or anything like that. And yeah, I, I do think they are trying to di diversify in that way. I would like a babe champion again at some point soon. Just to see them take another stab at what what are their see what they do differently. Champ. Yeah, like can you do an an, a, an attractive babe in a different way than you have before? Sure. That would be cool to see. But I'm glad to see them sort of just diversify more because vanilla league, much as people claim to have loved the beta more than season one and season one more than season two, like the champion designs were uglier. They just were. I'd like yeah. I think the next one I'd like to see. I'd like to see a male that's. Uh, you know, d gone from the the female gaze, kind of like that direction yeah. where they really. I mean, you could argue Tarek was, but Tarek is kind of metrosexual or or yeah. uh, bisexual potentially, just the way that his features are. I'd I'd really like to see a, f a male champion be designed from the woman gaze or the female. That gaze would be so cool. See see what it would be like that way because we don't we don't get that in video games. It's unfortunate. That's a whole other topic of conversation. But we do very you much. You do in Japan, but those those games are not for children. <laughs> <laughs> that is very true. <laughs> I, I can't like they've really now that you mentioned that we're talking about this. They've really gone away from that kind of 
female character with big boobs and everything like that. I mean, the last couple female characters were Alawi, Kindred's not sexual at all, Kalista, yeah. maybe, yeah. but not really. Jinx yeah. maybe is the last one, but yeah, no, yeah, and she was Jinx still is Jinx very is probably she was very petite and yeah, yeah, yeah. But but that was the last. That was you could argue that was the last like a, even somewhat attractive female they made. Yeah, and that was in 2013. Yeah, it's been yeah, that but, long. Uh, but I mean, so, it used to be like if you take Misfortune and and uh, Sona's so, uh, character designs yeah. and you remove the hair, you remove the makeup, you remove the the, the 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 like the outfits, you just reduce them down only to the body shape. It's the same. They're practically identical. Yeah. Like, and this is very common. Like, I'm, I wouldn't blame Riot particularly for like, oh, they're the only people doing this. No, everyone designs uh, characters that way in a lot of spaces. And the same for men. Like, if you remove a lot of character features, you get basically two or three different yeah. fundamental shapes that any like, character c can have. So, I, I, again, Riot are trying to sort of expand on that. They also need to do it for gameplay reasons because when you have a lot of champions that have the same like shape in their just in their bodies you have to add more and more costume to them to give them a different uh, outline in the game and if a character shares an outline with another character in the game like a contour then it becomes difficult to tell them apart especially in stuff like a team fight and then you have to signal them with bright colors and then you get a color mess and it just gets muddy and and really if you look at Team Fortress 2, that's a good example of how that's done well like every character you can recognize them from the outline and not just from the outfits and the opposite side of that is something like Call of Duty, where everybody looks the fucking same, no matter how many customization options you get. <laughs> right. Yeah, you know, speaking of things being hard to see in game, have you guys fought against Tarek in a large team fight? Yes. It's I very. <laughs> I was just going to. I, I, I wanted an answer, not just stare at Adam. <laughs> it was. I, I bring that up because it, it can be kind of hard to see some of his abilities being used in a team fight, specifically his W stun, because it's fair. It's a. Uh, it's very uh, light, uh, it's transparent, etc. Well, they had to up the size of his alt, too, because that was an issue as well. Yeah. So, I mean, I think it's kind of a problem across the board. It just I bring that up because I'm curious. I don't think uh, Talia is going to have this problem because we're going to get into her kit now, but I feel that the last champion sense of Lowey, some of their abilities are very hard to see in team fights because they try to make them transparent and, yeah. uh, you know, otherworldly, such as Lowey's tentacles. Or... Well, the, I mean, Alawi. The the nice thing about Alawi is that at least the the colors on her abilities, or other than her W, are completely different than how she looks. So, like, if something's popping off off of her, you kind of know that that's one of her abilities. Sure, I'm just I, I'm just like her tentacles are transparent and green, and that can be that can be lost very easily when you're inside a jungle. For example, it's very. It, sometimes it can be very hard to see those things, and, and that's why we're going to bring into the abilities now of Talia. And I think we should. Um, we can talk both how they work and how they visually appear in the game based on the champion preview that we've seen. So we'll just start from the top and talk about her rock surfing for f first and foremost. Um, that's is Talia gains up to forty percent, twenty to forty percent movement speed. As long as she's moving near terrain or structures, and that includes towers, inhibitors, etc., and uh, you can so you can enter that and get back to what or wherever you're going more quickly. So in her character model, she literally jumps up on top of a piece of rock, like in her splash art, and rides that to her location. Rock surfing. Yeah, you actually start to gain it gradually, and then when you hit the cap, it she jumps on that rock, but she takes a little bit of animation. Uh kind of gain momentum and then gain speed and then run jump on the rock and then start surfing on it yeah it is very fluid i mean we were talking earlier about how she's kind of like an airbender mixed with an earthbender but like even the way she walks is very fluid and the way that she gets onto the rock and then starts getting on the rock is very fluid as well I yeah the most really... surprising thing about this mm -hmm. sorry go is that no, no, go ahead there's only one passive for her passive, <laughs> <laughs> right. but they did add passives to Q and E, so they kind of they kind of stuck around that a little bit. Yeah, they do like their passives. They like the kit complication. <laughs> yeah, that's that has been a theme recently. Well, I'd like to say overall, overall, this kit definitely screams. Hmm. I was gonna say easy to use, hard as the master, but when I first tried her, it was hard to use. It seems kind of easy just reading through the abilities, but. They were actually kind of difficult. Well, let's talk yeah, about like, let's talk about threaded volley. Yeah, no, that's, that's like a Lucian ult. 
I mean, in the, in the in the mechanics of how it plays, like you get it, and then you start firing in a direction, and you have to move your character in order in order to point it in the right direction. So, like you, if you want to use the Q to do shit, then you've got to be on point with your movement. I don't like some of the names they chose for some of these abilities. I gotta throw that out there before we get in here. I don't like that Q is called Threaded Volley. I think they could have come up with a better name. I mean, even Rock Barrage would have been a better name than you Threaded could have Volley. Used, like stone volley as well <laughs> they yeah. do push on the weaving theme a bit she mentions a lot of her voice lines mentions weaving and i think yeah. threaded is another all right well they could have yeah. used unraveled and weaver's wool yeah what about threaded stone i don't know yeah yeah so, something i don't know i just in the, i'm nitpicking That's and there's nitpicking. no big yeah <laughs> like worked worked ground i know you can work what? ground up like that i think they could have come up with like a better name than worked ground for that but we'll get there so uh talia unleashes five stone shards when she uses q they fire out quick succession they but they work just like a lucian alt they go J -j -j -j, and as a, if you're moving they will fire out you know down exactly like a lucian alt same same exact thing um the first tart when it hits it does a burst of damage and then each subsequent hit they take 50 percent damage from subsequent shards so potentially doing an additional 200 percent damage if they take all five shards hits however when she uses q she creates a area of worked ground around her that lasts 180 to 99 seconds um, and while she is on the worked ground talia gains movement speed and she can only hurl one of those stone shards as long as she's standing on it using her q and she gets half her mana bag if she does correct and if she last hit with it um or if she's no, no, cast just, it, she gets cast it yeah yeah so I guess thematically what it's supposed to be is that she's taking rocks in the ground below her so that's damaged for a while and she can't necessarily use it to its full potential for a while. Yeah, but at the same time she also works the ground so it's a better surface for her to run on, gaining some movement speed. It, it is a really loaded kind of ability. Like there's yeah. a lot in there. Like you need it for positioning I think is the idea that you use worked ground to get yourself into good positions for a fresh threaded volley from some unworked ground that, I mean, that you can get to? It, 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 you're going to have to position yourself in a spot that you can get extra movement if you get ganked. You should position in a spot where if you want to get aggressive, you want to be able to get your five shards off, even though each subsequent one take like deals 50% less damage, you still want as much out of the ability as you can. So, I like... This ability in itself is pretty complicated in its use and like mastering mm -hmm. the flinging of these rocks. Definitely, I think it definitely yeah. it definitely key to mastering her landing phase. I think, considering it's a rather large area and it lasts a long time, so you you really got to manage your space whenever you cast Q. Otherwise, you you could easily cover the whole line, your half of the lane with worked ground. And then you don't really have a lot of opportunities to get the full potential of damage for harassment if you do that. I'm wondering if they made the ability like this because if she had the just the first part and never had made worked ground, it would be too strong. Or if they wanted to make the kit like this from the beginning. Because yeah. it seems like, yeah, like if you work a ground, you don't get as much damage. You don't get as much burst at all. But you do get that movement speed and reduced mana cost. Movement so speed I, does help a lot. I mean, if you're getting ganked, yeah. you can use it to get out. And it's also really good for dodging skill shots. Mm-hmm. But who yeah, needs moose people when you could blow someone up? <laughs> I mean, I think the idea, because I think the problem with threaded volley is like when you use it, if you don't land every hit on the enemy champion, like there's a decent chance you're going to end up pushing a wave. Like if you could just five shots all the time, three of them connect to a guy, two of them connect to minions, all of a sudden your wave is pushing when you don't want it to. So I think it might have to do with wave management as well, that if you can just throw out one shard, then you can and last hit with it yeah. without it shoving the wave. Precision. It does. Yeah. It does hit in a little bit of an AoE. I found it pretty weak at clearing the wave early, but then as I got some damage, it mm -hmm. obviously got a lot better at that. So maybe maybe a... your first... So before your first back, I don't think you need to worry about that as much. And then it depends on what you pick up after that. They do. I think they do try to make up for the damage at the cooldown because it starts at 10, but when you max it, it goes all the way down to 4. And with some cooldown reduction, that's like a 2-second cooldown that you're just taught. You know, yeah, I mean, you, you can those... spit rocks like it's your job. That's going to be my next comment was early game. Her cooldowns all seem really long for a mage. 10 seconds, 16 seconds, 16 seconds for her basic abilities. 
it's like karma to be honest with you that's pretty much exactly the way karma is they're like 10 second cooldowns that go down to about they go down to four if i remember correctly i mean that's that's five. sort of how Zareth is too like his his early cooldowns are particularly long so i mean mm -hmm. it, it that that's not too you know out of character for a mage right Let's talk about seismic shove, which again, I don't like the word shove, even though that's what you're doing. <laughs> uh, so the way this works is that Talia marks a location. It's a it's a circle around her, right? And then she has a circle indicator inside of there, kind of like a, a chogath rupture, uh, the way that you would you would target it. Uh, after you mark a location, after a brief delay, the ground erupts and it deals magic damage, and then it knocks them up for one second. You can also recast seismic shove as it erupts or before it erupts to cause them to or to throw the target in a location definitely you're knocking the target in a location so uh, knock knock up is uh the key word here because it would work with yasuo for example you can knock them up and get yasuo ultimate um but to make that more clear you throw your w down if you don't recast it, it'll just knock them straight up if you recast it you can toss them in a direction in a three in a 360 radius this seemed difficult to use at first for someone first time playing her. Like I, I was able to get this, and I, I, we haven't talked about it yet, but I think you're you're gonna normally combo this with your E. But it was took me a while to get that combo down and get both of them at the same time, and not just knock them up and get that drag. And it, it's a small, a much smaller area than you mentioned, Chogath. It's a much smaller area than that. I it's also an expensive combo. Down. Yes. That too. It's an expensive. Like it's 100, yeah. 160 mana to pull up the Unraveled Earth Seismic Shove combo. And if you miss that, like you're going to be out a lot of mana. And the mm -hmm. cooldown being so long, I think you burn a lot of threat in the early game if you try and get that off. So I think her early game might just be more of a stalling thing, like where you keep Seismic Shove or Unraveled Earth around for ganks. And then when your cooldown is a bit lower and you have some more mana to play with, then you can get aggressive. Well, it's but early on, too. it seems so expensive. Because from what I've heard, it's not the easiest thing to land either. So if it is expensive, you're it's going to take some time for people to get the practice to start using it. And if you can't use it all the time, people are going to take longer to figure out what they're doing. A fair point. Let's talk about her Unraveled Earth then, because that one was pretty simple. Um, Unraveled Earth, Earth. Yeah, Unraveled Earth. So the way this works is that when you activate it, it scatters 18 boulders over the ground in a cone before her. And it automatically deals magic damage to any enemies that hits. Uh, the boulders then remain there for four seconds, slowing all enemies in the area. It actually is 20% plus 4% per 100 AP. So that's a unique interaction with the ability power that she has, is she actually gains additional slow based on the ability power. This is kind of like a lot of supports had this kind of utility scaling with their AP. Right. At the end of the duration, all remaining boulders explode in a conic wave, dealing Unraveled Earth's initial damage once more. So you've got that blast and then the delay and blast again. Uh, however, there is another piece to this, much like Q, that enemies who dash over or are knocked through Unraveled Earth's boulders cause them to detonate instantly, each dealing them 50% of Unraveled Earth's initial damage to a maximum of four boulders per enemy. So you can do 200% damage if you knock somebody in the middle of four boulders. I think yeah. the best description I heard for this is it's similar to Zig's minefield. Uh-huh. Sort of, yeah. And yeah, this is the combo we were talking about earlier with W and E, is that you can use W yeah. to knock them into your Unraveled Earth to get that damage from it. And then yeah, I also or, heard that Alistair's yeah. headbutt works. Or if they Any just dash back, yeah. through it, I guess. If they're dashing towards you, you throw it in front of you, they'll take a bunch of damage. And it'll slow them. I can't imagine. And it'll detonate it. I think it's going to be... That seems... I guess it depends how close the... I didn't see how close the boulders were. Was it? Is it fairly easy to get four boulders at once if you throw somebody yes. into they're it? Pretty, they're pretty. Yeah. They're very close to each other. There, like, there's 18 of them in a, a very small area comparatively. They're, yeah. they're not very large, and they're very tightly compact. Like They're yeah. all touching each other. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's like like a, it's, think of like a mini there. chess board, and each one of them is one of the chess squares. Sure. Okay, I see what you're saying. Easy enough. But that 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 has that has she's she has pretty decent AP ratio. I mean, before we get to her ultimate, she has a hundred percent, oh, one point two percent ratio max damage on her Q, a point four percent on seismic shove. She has point eight percent max damage on Unraveled Earth. That's if you get the maximum out of your abilities, though. Right, max. So that, that's one point two percent if you hit with all of your shards on Q, and then you know 
the 0.8 percent on E if they get hit with a trigger. Right. It's so I mean, you got to actually use her abilities correctly. It's 0.4 percent per shard, or, or 0.4 per shard. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I feel like Unraveled Earth is sort of meant to plug holes in Weaver's Wall. Like when you're doing, hey. when we get to the ultimate later. Like I think I think it's meant to be sort of complementary to that. That when you can't use your ultimate to control territory. At least you have that thing to stop a Lucian dashing in. I don't know if it'll work on Tristana jumps though. Like jump abilities like Cossix, when if they land on it, do they get damaged as well? On the I mean, wall? I think the wall no. Uh, on on Earth, Earth. 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 The I would assume thing. so. I don't think they're coded. Like I think they're coded as dashes. So unless they've changed that, I it would. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense. If someone jumping over it would take damage, but I think they you've always been able to like do stuff through that. Yeah, if they land on it, probably they'll take the extra. Well, damage. I mean, yeah. they, like I don't know if you've seen what it looks like when they they activate, but like a spike shoots up into the air. So like you could argue that if they are in the air, the spike would might hit them. I mean, yeah. it, it says dash over, so I don't know. You get hit by Chograth rupture, even though it doesn't. I mean. Listen, we can just Tristana on our team and throw out Unraveled Earth and then have Tristana uh, R them all into the Unraveled Earth for a oh, ton man. of burst damage. That's a lot of damage, yeah. <laughs> uh, let's talk about Weaver's Wall. So, Weaver's Wall has a range of 3,000 going uh, maxing at 6,000. And uh, the cooldown is fairly long, at 160 seconds at rank 1. And uh, the way this works is Talia channels for one second before summoning a massive wall of spiral spiraling rock that tears through the battlefield in target direction. So, essentially, she just creates this massive wall, like a Nivea wall, but it's just fucking But huge. it's super long. And she can jump up on it and ride it all the way to her location. And it's impen impenetrable ter er, terrain. So she can just jump on this wall and fly from mid lane all the way to bot. Just and, and she's there. She yeah. takes a rock taxi. <laughs> <laughs> ding, ding. Uber's here. Yep. <laughs> yeah. what, what, what are you I, saying I think about it's overpowered. I think it's overpowered. Way overpowered, in, in, at least in high level of pro play. Because like it's even at rank one, it's like every two and a half minutes, you can cut off. If any lane, if, if she's in mid or in the jungle and a lane in range is overextending, she can just cut off their escape like and force a flash. And then before the flash comes back up, she can do it again. So I think if, if you have any coordination and any ability to place that to cut off someone who steps even a little bit out of line, you can get so many kills. I mean, to be fair, Twisted Fate's ultimate is would be comparable in this, in that... Uh, well, except she doesn't have to put herself at any risk. Yeah, I it's guess. It, the, the wall doesn't, doesn't last that to. long, though. It doesn't last as long as the Nivy wall. It's pretty much she jumps off it and it pretty much disappears. And it takes time. It like The wall literally moves slowly as it rises, right? Yeah, it takes yeah, time. Yeah, they, for it they to get some better. warning. Yeah. But so you. Yeah, you you, you yeah. can actually see where it's going to be. Like, it, it through Fog of War, everyone on the map can see where it's going to be. And that's what I think doesn't make it. I, I agree that I that it could be super powerful because you can block off locations. But the fact that it doesn't melt away like a Nivea wall over, you know, like a one and a half second or two second period of time or whatever it be might balance this ability it, out. It lasts, well, it, it it lasts, lasts six a, seconds and an idiot will last five a, seconds. A so fair. it lasts longer. So it lasts longer. And and like it, it does it does melt away. It's just that rather than the whole wall melting away, it's like each piece melts away Falls in away. succession in the order that they were put on the field. That that's okay, that's what I'm trying to convey is that uh, it doesn't yeah, exactly. Okay. Cool. I mean it's not gonna put a wall up across the entirety of the map that from the time she casts it to six seconds like it it it's staggered from where the wall is at so as the wall is made that portion of the wall as soon as it's up will last six seconds so like yeah. uh, all right so if you want to you could all all the way from mid to bottom lane and that would be awesome except the other people the enemy team's gonna know that you're doing it so they can back off but let's say that you go down to like near the dragon pit and you ult then that's way less time for them to react and then you can just surf that bitch in right behind them which is shown in the champion spotlight video and I mean, it, it lasts until they killed somebody as soon as she hopped off that wall. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think there is a, a lot of risk with this ability. Um, a, a good opportunity to screw it up and get yourself killed, because let's keep in mind that she doesn't actually have a way to get over her own wall. 
mm-hmm. besides no. Flash. So I mean, it, it would be one thing if they created the created a champion that could work around the wall that they create and jump back and forth over it. Not her. So I Do, mean, she can screw herself over. Can Don't, she pick what side of the wall she jumps off on? Yes. Yeah. Okay. You you just use like a move command, and as soon as you do it, you hop off on the side that you clicked. Uh, the other piece of that that hasn't been stated yet is if she takes damage at all, it knocks her off the wall. Yeah. Yeah. And I also found it really easy to accidentally knock yourself off if you pressed anything. Mm-hmm. You just kind of you... have to let it happen if you want to go the yeah. distance. So you press R <laughs> while you're casting it to hop on, and then you press R later on to destroy it. But what happens if you press R while you're riding it? You hop off. Yeah. You just hop off. Peace, bitch. Thanks for yeah. half a wall. <laughs> Taking damage or inputting a movement command in any direction. Well, I don't know about that. Dam- yeah, but what if you hit it? It might be that, that, that wall? I, I think that what I was doing. Weaver's wall destroys the wall instantly. So I think if she's riding and then reactivates, the, she's just going to jump off and the wall is going to Okay, so don't mash away. R. Yeah. Please don't mash R. Mash it carefully anyway. Yeah, you want to mash it to, it. It, to <laughs> ride it st- and then yeah. not touch it. You got to get that sweet spot. But yeah, you could pr- yeah you press. So taking any damage, so if you get hit by like a minion, even I suppose, because it doesn't. This ability make... also does no damage. Zero, yeah. Yeah. So this is an ultimate that's complete utility mobility, no damage, but. So as a whole lot of. Could you just use this like roaming from mid down a bot and just throwing down this wall as your jungler comes in bots for the assist and just yes. walling off yeah. half the lane? Yes. They is just have a, no is escape. Is there a reason she can't be a jungler? People We're have played her jungle already. Cool really? Long cooldowns early. Long cooldowns early. Yeah, yeah. Like I was saying earlier, Q doesn't really do a lot of damage to minions early. I think she'd really struggle with wave clear or jungle clear. She needs I, blue. To I start. tried. Yeah, I. Tr- well, I also tried her in the jungle. It didn't didn't go that well. I'm sure if you got a heavy leash, you could make it work. But I don't think that's going to be her home. Even though you you would think there's a lot of terrain you could ride, you could get mobility, but. Yeah, I, th- I think some of her slow clear will be made up for by by her passive be- letting her just get movement speed all the time. But yeah, yeah. but she also has no not innate sure. self sustain, so it's not even a matter of just getting around quickly and clearing quickly, but actually being able to survive because none of these things give her health back, or she has no shields or anything. Yeah, I do wonder about possible support because it feels like she has the utility for that. Well, they they have her marked as mage primary and secondary support. Oh, and- so they do. Um. I'm thinking that her PO is a little weak, though, since W does have a delay on it, and it's not very large. Um, at least she does have an Unraveled Earth, though. That's not too bad if you get it off while they're approaching you. If they already jumped on top of you, then you're kind of in trouble. She's it's good for you. <laughs> yeah, plus the Weaver's Wall, like, the best she can do with the wall for escape is just get herself out or cut off the enemy. But I, I want to see, like, some bronze plays where someone... Is playing Talia support and their AD carry gets jumped on. They just go lol, bye, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> run away. With oh, the I wall. know I'll do that to punch one day. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. I'll be sure to pick somebody that can jump. <laughs> oh no, you, you, you think I'm going to like cut you off? No, I'm going to be left behind and just go down the river. See ya. I'm going to mid lane. <laughs> I'm helping the mid laner on today. Can't wait. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm used to being bot limbo myself, so whatever. <laughs> do your worst. <laughs> It is such an I'm helping ultimate though. Like I know, you really fuck your team over <laughs> so badly. With if her, you wanted to be an asshole, you think, you think with her entire kit, are bad. with yeah. her entire kit, it seems very. Um, it's very involved. It takes a lot of thought to be able to do the damage you need to do. Um, uh, I think that she has enough utility, enough damage in her kit to be able to be played either pro- uh, professionally or in solo queue at points. Do I think she's going to come straight out of the gate screaming? No. But uh, I think she's going to be like an Aurelian soul where you get 50 games under your belt and suddenly you are the god of mid lane or goddess. I mean, she she seems like she's going to be pretty decently high skill cap, but the uh, it's interesting because we were bitching about all the dashes that they've added on champions before, uh, sometimes multiple dashes on a kit or multiple mobility things. She has mobility, but none of them are dashes. Or, mm-hmm. or like jumps or leaps. She has like her ult, which is awesome, but it doesn't do any damage. And so it's, and it's 40% yeah. movement speed at, at max rank for her passive if she's yeah. near a wall. But I mean, and out of combat only. 
yeah, yeah. And, and that's something that builds up over time too so like she has mobility to get to and from places but she doesn't have like that instant action jerk mobility on so many like that a leblanc or a zed or uh you know some high mobility high tier picks have been in the past you guys brought yeah. up a good point earlier uh before the podcast that she also has some anti-mobility uh-huh um, oh, yeah. they're experimenting with different ways to kind of hurt people that have or hurt all the champions that have dashes which there are plenty yep yeah, anybody that has some kind of uh, yeah, I brought that point earlier that it's interesting that the last couple reworks champions have had some type of anti-dash or anti-movement baked into their kit. And I can only imagine that's because of the mobility creep that happened between seasons two and four. <laughs> Especially when you have, like, yeah, there's just there's just been so much movement added into this game after people bitching that no one can move. So I mean, in the, in the one case, they, they look at Cassiopeia and they give her something that just prevents any blinks. In this case, they give you the mobility, but you get hurt for it. So they're trying it's, different things, which I find interesting. I think it's funny too with the Cassiopeia change in that they they're not only just removing like, you know, she'll get a little bit of the mobility from a Q, but uh, they're not just removing it. Well, her her ability to remove it from other people if they're in her miasma, but it's also interesting with the the boot removal. They're removing some of her mobility anyway just to do it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like you get the six mobility. item slot. This but is how we fight everything. Yeah, they're trying to deal with mobility. It looks like because like taking that away from Cassiopeia, it's like theoretically that's a death sentence to get for anything that builds boots early and can get on top of her can just shut her down because she has no way to shove them back or match them for movement speed because her hers goes up slowly, so you can always outspike her on that. Like so, I don't know. I don't know where they're going exactly with it, but they do seem to be trying to solve the movement problem. Well, I mean, a lot I think of it's it... a very interesting way to address it. At the very least, like a lot of her kit is just very interesting and very different. Like, the worked ground mechanic, the the dash mechanic, although it's similar to what Cass has, except for instead of rooting them in place or grounding them, so to speak, it does extra damage to people who are dashing through your your unraveled earth as opposed to just walking through it. I, I think it's very interesting, and it kits us like a lot of new stuff in it. Well, it's yeah. super interesting that they on two mages that they release, you know, not necessarily back to back, but in very short terms with each other. Uh, Aurelian Soul has a cross map move too, but his if you get hit, you also get knocked out. So it's one of these things that's like, oh hey, we're not going to give you that like short distance mobility that I was talking about. That's like the instant action sort of thing like that. We'll give you some planned mobility that has counterplay to it. It's kind of like playmaking ability, whereas the blinks are kind of is kind of oh shit mobility. Yeah. Uh, oh or shit, I need to get out of like, here. And this is right, let's set up a gank. I would say the other one's play mobility, and this is kind of like game. Yeah, macro, macro. mobility. Yeah, like yeah. this is that's this is objective mobility. ability. Yeah, yeah mobility. Yeah. Whereas the other one is 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 like high impact mobility that like yeah. I need to do this now and once. I, the, the well, outcome I need to do is going to happen in the next half a second. Let, let's yeah. look at the champions that have been designed previously. Like uh, Sky and brought up the you know like the version one champions or season one champions. Like we're looking at Nocturne for example, who has mobility in his kit through his R, but there is no counterplay to that other than well I hope it's not me that got hit by his ultimate. <laughs> well, <laughs> you, know. you also have to have vision of your target for that. So I, I would say that's you know. It, well, it, it used has. to and be also, he had a giant fucking range on it. Now it's well, but yeah. my point where I'm getting this is, is his range is really small. It's basically tower to you know the middle of the lane, right? Like he's got a yeah. tiny little range at his ultimate at level. Or, level yeah, I mean, at, at max rank, it's like turret to turret, yeah, a little farther than that. But there, there, there's no other, there's no counterplay into that other than oh, I hope I don't get hit because you know it affects everybody. But they've they've been moving away from that. Um, Gee, I hope I have crowd control, and yeah, he doesn't have I, a spell shield. Yeah, or gee, I hope it's not coming at me, like the Twisted Fate type of thing, where you get the little debuff in your head, and you don't know where he's going, you're like, well, gee, I hope he's not coming into my lane. That, that type of stuff has been removed to have more counterplay, other than, oh, yeah. shit, I have to flash. How do we feel about Telly as a counterpick to Kogma, though? Or other, like, really immobile... Oh, like, or, like Soraka because... or anybody who can't get away because you just put that wall behind them and then... Yeah, exactly, and, and even, like, Unraveled Earth into into the seismic shop. If they don't have a dash or something to get away, 
then it gets a lot easier to land that combo, especially if you build Rylize on her. Yes. I was I, thinking uh, that would be good to set I, up your, your abilities, yeah. I don't know what is going to happen with this season of the LCS with the changes to towers and split pushing and... Uh, early tower pushes are a lot harder now because previously if this was you know if this was patch 6.6 .6, for example and this champion came out i'd say yeah she'd likely be pushed in the mid lane if she could hold her own because mid laners traditionally through these past nine patches have been can you stand alone in mid lane with little to no help maybe a gank comes at level three right and uh yeah she can do that likely like through her kid i think she could she has enough mana and whatnot to take care of that however if this meta changes where it's stale and there could be potential ganks, she actually might be more powerful in that. But at the same time, can she push the enemy laner out? Will the Orianna REZs that we're likely going to see in this season of the LCS, uh, can she push as fast as those, those enemies can with the workaround? And the answer to that is likely no. So she... Yeah, it's, it's definitely hard to push when you have the workaround in an area you would want to be standing and positioning. So, that, yeah, I, like I said, I don't know what's going to happen in the LCS, but looking at the champions that are powerful between... Uh, there's Vel'Koz, there's Ari, there's Fizz, there's Zed. Champions uh, that are good at sieging. Victor and LeBlanc. Like, yeah, those, like, six champions that I can name off the top of my head that I know are going to be played in the mid lane. I think she can fare well. I just don't know if she will fare... If she will do as well as we will hope. I yeah. think it's going to be... It's going to be... It, I hate to say it, it's a skill matchup. Aren't, uh, but I mean, is that a bad thing? No. So that th that's your answer right there. That if if anything, that would be a well designed champion. Fair. That's a fair point. Yeah. And I think she's going to be powerful. Like if if you're playing for dragons, if you're playing for late game baron, like if 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 your team is just like just get through the early mid game, get to the late game. If you have that wall and you we're going to go for baron now. If you want to get to us and stop us killing the Baron in the next five seconds, you're going to have to flash over one wall and then try and get into the Baron pit. Like, mm. if, if you can play around her ultimate correctly in a in a coordinated teamfight environment in the LCS, I think she's going to be crazy powerful. Like, at, at, in the high-level pre-mates and shit like that, I think she's going to be crazy powerful. Don't know about solo queue. Well, anything that can shape something that large on the map and be able to get you from A to B and then put out... A, enough damage or redirect like it might be one of those situations where you're not just taking talia for the raw damage you'd bring her like lissandra to just be a pain in the ass and be able to lock somebody completely down or uh, like uh, any other mage that isn't just you know you, you almost see like a lulu solo lane sort of situation a lot of built-in utility uh is pretty great in a 1v1 and then mm. is is like a more AP support. Yasuo counter ah. ultimate though. I think his wind wall will actually destroy Lock the wall. It. We That's wall. funny. Yeah. Oh. It should actually like destroy it completely. Yeah. I guess. Giant that. wall of rocks comes across. I mean, I would I would think it would probably like halt it. <laughs> so anything before it might continue, but like yeah. anything before it would be there. But it, he could halt the that movement be... of that. Interesting to see which wins. Same thing with Braum, I suppose. Like he would be able to stop oh, yeah. the wall. Wall versus okay. wall. That was one of the problems that CLG ran into at MSI is they picked Aurelian Soul and the enemy team picked Braum. And then at yeah. that point, it's just like, well, <laughs> so, sorry about your mid laner. He does nothing now. That's too bad. <laughs> so, yeah, if you're going to that, if you're gonna pick one of these champions at a pro level, you have to make sure that you have the right pick ban phase to be able to yeah, use them. Yeah, or you game. last pick. You don't counter pick yourself. You pick her early, everyone on the other team is just going to have dashes. So. Yeah. Dashes or walls. <laughs> I mean, everyone has dashes anyway, so... Right, that's why she has worked crowd, or excuse me, uh, unraveled Earth. See, it's interesting that it doesn't affect blinks, and like a lot of those mid laners you mentioned that are super strong. Well, at least some of them, I guess, have blinks, like Zed. I guess technically uh, Aris is a dash. Aris is a dash. To yeah, uh, looks LeBlanc's like a blink, a but it's technically it's a dash. A dash. It's it's a dash. dash. Yeah. So, yeah. and I mean, it, it's enough of a dash where you you can, can get dodge knocked. See it coming out. You can get knocked out before you land it. So fair. All right. Well, I think that pretty much sums up Talia for tonight. Any final words from anybody aesthetically, uh, play-wise, anything? We'll take I that think as, it's really cool. She looks fun. She, she looks like... <laughs> <laughs> pretty much everybody's like... saying the same thing. Like, yeah, here's a final word. She looks fun. 
Yeah, she I mean, looks fun. She, she looks hard to play. She looks yeah. like it took a little while to get the combos down and stuff like that. She looks like a people. lot of people are going to struggle on her for a couple yeah. weeks. And then <laughs> gonna she looks like fails. she's going to inspire some hilarious bronze mo uh, montages of the wall <laughs> getting used incorrectly. From or, Sky End, specifically. Or, or like <laughs> All fighting. of them are going to be me. Just <laughs> I, me I can't wait. Getting any of these pentakills. That's what's going to be happening. somebody to ult and ride it too far. Just like <laughs> completely bypass the fight. Just travel all the way down. She does. Yeah, the new Scion ult. It's a drive-by. <laughs> oh, she's a terrible Aram champion. I just thought about that. Like she does nothing. Like her ultimate. I guess you oh, could. Oh, jeez. Yeah. So if I, you have an Aram only account, don't buy. Her. I guess you could yeah. do like a diagonal wall, but she seems that that ultimate seems pretty worthless there. Yeah, I mean, I guess she can zone people away from their turrets. Is the most she can do. <laughs> this tiny little wall. Boop, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> Considering how much power is in her, in her ultimate, I think that's the one thing that worries me is that her team fight might be a little weak because she needs to use her ultimate to set it up. Or to She's going to be it. fucking hilarious in Earth mode, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would be great. All over the place. Across the streams. <laughs> I'd love to be able to just throw people all around the entire time. Just as they land, they get thrown again. You can just like do a bouncy <laughs> pit back and forth. The trampoline. Yeah, trampoline. There we go. What, what, remember we talked about the trampoline a while ago. It was like Cho'Gath, something else. Like, do you guys remember when we talked about that? I'll fight Lulu. That's it. Yes, anybody that, that sounds terrible. Yes, Sue Oak <laughs> probably could be thrown in there too. Well, I terrible would hope so. on the trampoline. Yeah, the terrible trampoline. <laughs> <laughs> trampoline of terror. All right, Sean. Yeah, that's a good one. Trampoline of terror. That's much better. Yeah. All right, guys. I think that pretty much sums it up. Um, you can check out Sky and Pitch everything, please. Yes, go to castercomics.com if you want to read my comics. And that's Caster Comics with an X uh, at the end there, not a, not a CS like a normal person would write it. And if you want to like, get free art from me or like, save up to buy a cheap commission of something at Avatar, whatever, you can go to patreon.com slash castercomics, again, spelled in a weird way, and pledge whatever you're able. I really appreciate it, and it helps me out a lot. And, uh, yeah, also do that for the T-Force guys. These guys are really nice and bring me on to talk about stupid shit that I'm interested in all the time. So, I think it's cool. Hey, why not? Yeah. You don't have anything better to spend your money on, you rich assholes. That's right. <laughs> hey, we enjoy bringing you on because I, I love being able to talk about the design of a champion with somebody who's so passionate about art. Yeah. Yes. And and it's it's, it's that... nice to get another voice. Yeah, you see things that I don't think I would, uh, or maybe anyone else on the podcast would. Yeah, we're we're looking at things way too mechanically. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he brings up the boot, and I'm like, yeah, I see the boot. He's like, well, the boot does this, and it brings this to this perspective. I'm like, the light oh. that it creates, it's like, <laughs> oh well, blown. fuck. I just saw a boot and yeah. some the colors. Let's go. <laughs> I'm a heathen. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, it's it's about three a.m. over at Sky. I can't remember. It's you, you, Denmark. That's right. Right. Yeah. Yes, it's about 3 a.m. and over in Denmark. So we're going to let Sky and go ahead off to bed. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you, Sky, and again for joining us. Uh, until next time, when the next champion releases are get reworked, everybody, that is episode number 361 of the Trinity Force podcast. We will be back on Monday with a Patreon episode and potentially Riot Scarzard for Wednesday of next week. So there you go, guys. We will see you all uh, next week for episode 362 and C3C. See you guys. <laughs>